Good morning. This is Steve Nolan. Um, I have the pleasure of closing out the presentations today. So we'll get started. There's about 30 slides in this presentation, and then um, some of it will reiterate what, what Derwood mentioned in the beginning, um, just for those that have turned in late. So I'm going to go over some of the global changes um, related to numbers and titles, specifically for the structure standards. Um, we'll talk about what Brexit is, um, some of the discontinued standards, and minor and major revisions to, to the standard plans, the instructions, and data tables. And then we'll finish up with um, some work on developmental standards and what we're planning in the uh, year ahead. So we affectionately term the movement of the structures plans, standard plans to the contract plans as Brexit, bridge exit. And it just makes it easy to talk about it quickly rather than standard plans to structures <laughs> plans. And with all the other changes to the naming conventions, uh, it's a convenient acronym. So why are we doing this? Well, traditionally, the standard plans were included uh, with the bridge drawings and then we merged structures and railway standards around 2006 and went to electronic book. Um, those were just included in the contract plans via reference. Uh, this, this didn't meet everyone's needs and so in an effort to, to provide the maintenance office um, a better set of, of uh, preservation records that need to be maintained for the life of the bridge. We've decided to move the standard drawings back in with the contract plan set for the bridge components. That should also make it a little more convenient for the contractor, having all the drawings um, at his fingertips in the same package. And the um, designers of, of future rehabilitation, widenings, etc., will, will have all the information available without uh, necessarily having to, to search and interpret the correct year that, that the bridge was built. So how are we going to do this and still be true to the 1DOT principle and not completely segregate from, from the uh, road and traffic standards? So we struggle with that, but um, we're keeping them all in the same standard plans. As Derwood mentioned earlier, we've just split the naming convention into two subsets of road and bridge. What that means, looking at the old uh, list of standards, basically the, two, the old 2000 series all moved to the bridge standards plans and then the traffic railings that were mounted on, on bridge structures were, were also moved. Uh, there was also box culverts that some are classified as bridge structures, some are not, so that had to be handled separately as a special case. This is a screenshot of the standard plans web page with the lower portion devoted to the standard plans for bridge construction. Um, you can still view the drawings that for those relevant index numbers on the web page, they're just not contractually binding. So the do I draw your attention to the highlighted note at the just below the banner, which um, advises that they, these drawings are for information only and, and the contractor is required to use those drawings in the contract plan set for, for construction. So as you know, that's not all. We've got name changes and number changes. So there was, there was a triple whammy this year for you all, but I'm sure you can handle it. We've uh, got an example here of what that means, moving the structure standard plans into a contract set of plans for, for bridges. Um, so this would be the case where you had a, a um, an generic or overview cover sheet without the full index and then there would be a separate index of sheets. And we are putting the standard plans for bridge construction 
directly behind each bridge number. So those relevant standards for each bridge are included in a, a single PDF file, but um, the names of each of the individual standards, applicable standards, are included uh, in the index. I refer you to the Structures Design Bulletin 17-09, which, which has more examples on this and some explanation. We also have a delivery tool that helps assemble these drawings for the contract package. Um, the, the Excel file that is the crosswalk between the payout items entered into uh, the transport or designer interface um, utilizes the pay items and then highlights specific indexes that that may be applicable to the project. It's always up to the designer to verify with a checkbox whether to include that particular index in the in the PDF package for the standard for the contract plans. Um, but we've done all the, the searching for you and you um, you should know what, what's required in your set of bridge plans. This application also develops a, a text file that can be placed into the index automatically. So um, that that is all available for you. It's delivered as a application in the in the CAD load and you would find it in the in the structures bar menu under applications. Um, shown lower on the screen there. Um, just out of interest for those that, that want to see how this fits into the sheet ordering sequence uh, from the from the CAD manual, we have a, a sheet order for the DGNs and the PDF. Um, please note that we're not including DGNs in the in the electronic files uh, for these contract plans for the standards, just the PDFs. And you can manually do this directly downloading from the website, but this just um, expedites the, the process. If for some reason you don't have the latest catalog, you can always get a copy of Standard Plans pr Package or Program off our support page on the Structures Design website. Uh, link provided at the top of the screen there. And one final thing um, is a little clarification on the, the quantities issues um, related to box culverts in particular. Since we have both bridge size box culverts and non-bridge size box culverts, so the, the standard plans for the box culverts still have to be included in a structures component. Um, but since there is sometimes no bridge number associated with the box culvert, it needs to be, well, it within the summary of pay items, it will be listed under a roadway item for quantities. And therefore, the summary of quantities in the plans must be in the associated roadway component set of plans. If it has a bridge number, then it will automatically be loaded into that particular bridge number with all the other uh, bridge items. Um, and so those quantities would then be summarized in the standard bridge summary of quantities table. So there, there'll be, there was some changes to the FDM to identify the particular issues about box culverts. Um, so there's, there's more information out there, and there'll be a follow-up bulletin shortly um, with some additional information, but the, the procedure's already established out there. This is not really any different from how we handle retaining walls in that the details are included in the structures plans component, but the quantities are listed under the roadways section and then the summary of quantities is included in, in the tables in the roadway component. So
So that's that's a, it for the overview on Brexit. Um, if you've got any questions that aren't handled in the provided documentation, then feel free to send me an email and we'll, we'll try and point you in the right direction. All right, so moving on specifically to the standard plans themselves, as you know, the numbers change. The format of the numbering is is based on the specification number or the main specification that pertains to the index, and then the remaining three digits are a unique identifier. We have tried at least structures to, to keep something similar to what we had before just to make it easier during the transition. That wasn't always possible or necessarily necessarily logical for a long term, but for the most part, uh, we were able to do that with, with, the, with the structured standard plans. Um, it was not as easy to do that with the roadway. So, so on this screen, we were showing some common changes that occurred with the first set, the bullet railing and concrete parapet. They used to be all grouped together under the 800 series. Um, because of the components are covered by different specification sections, they actually get split up now into 521 and 515. Uh, but if you look at the purple numbering, that's similar, not always identical to what it was before. So that, that's a crutch to help you through the transition. Uh, composite bearing pads, that was a bit of an outlier since there was no specific construction specification. There is a material specification, but uh, the pay item is actually under the 400 series, so that one we we kept with the with the 400 series for concrete work. Walls they used to be grouped under the 6000 series, which all seem logical and, and great, but since those components are all either cast in place concrete under 400 or pre-stressed under 455 or even MSC walls under 4, 548, they all get get segregated. Um, those are not bridge standards, so they're actually in the road in the standard plans for road construction. Um, so that's that's another thing you have to be aware of when you're when you're hunting for a particular standard that you're in the right group. And then finally, there the the some of the pre-stressed elements as we begin developing um, composite. Reinforced products or FRP, fiber reinforced polymer. We have two standards right now for the bearing piles for bridges and the, and the sheet piles that contain um, both carbon pre stressing and stainless steel uh, that were previously separated under a 22,000 series to, to keep those all together. Well, once again, to be consistent with the specification. Um, governing those indexes. Those are now grouped together under 455 and the separation is achieved uh, by, by the unique numbering series at, at the end. So piles, the FRP piles are under the 455-100 series and then sheet piles, that one was was up in the air. We, we couldn't go up to the next 100, 100 series so we kept the the 440, which was the uh, 22440, was the previous number. There are also a number of minor changes to the names of individual indexes. Might be frustrating to you, all, but um, when you see them listed out uh, on the table of contents, it, it makes it makes a little more sense of why we did that. Um, basically, the the main topic of the index is is the lead. No, part of the name and then the subcategory for for the particular details that might be shown on that index number are, are secondary. So when you're scanning through, you'll see in this example, forward I beam will be there for both the general details, individual different beam heights for the for the um, build up tables. Um, so so just something to be aware of, and then. Um, Similar sort of situation with with the precast sheet piles and some others where um, we've got the same lead name and then the selective material type is is appended to the end. Um, so 
just more changes. Uh, revision logs are always there to, to see what change under each individual index. They wouldn't mention that earlier, so I won't dwell on that. So moving on to what was deleted or retired, the F-shape changes that Richard went over in detail, uh, obviously have, have been replaced with a single slope. So there were three index, index numbers that were deleted because of that, and then because of the MASH, excuse me, the MASH TL4 requirement, um, the, the corral railing was also retired since it, it did not meet the, the minimum height that we needed for TL4. Uh, we we may look for a replacement for that. There's obviously a lot of work being done at the national level to to get all the states up to speed on on MASH. So um, stay tuned there. There are also some other changes to various indexes because of the change in shape of the, the traffic railing. Uh, three of those are listed there. And if you refer to the 2017 design update training, uh, Charles Boyd and I did it at the expo. Um, there's some more information on transition from, from the F shape to the single slope and the background on that. So some of the minor changes we'll go through quickly uh, are listed there. Uh, Consistent naming conventions with, with the specifications, uh, the generic naming of, of traffic railings that uh, Richard mentioned earlier, where those basically the traffic railings that are located on the bridge remain traffic railings consistent with the ASHTO design, bridge design specification, and then those that are wall or shoulder mounted, which might be considered more. Uh, Roadway-based railings are uh, uh, named concrete barriers. Um, maybe one day Ashto on a national level will get get consistent with that naming convention, but um, that's where we're at right now. There are also changes to to some of the other <laughs> noise wall or traffic-related design standards be, because of that that nomenclature. So examples are listed there at the bottom of the screen. Moving on to some specific detail changes within the indexes uh, because of the change from 32 inch to 36 inch height in the traffic railings, the, the height of pedestrian railing posts to maintain a consistent 42 or 48 inch total height uh, resulted in, in detail changes to the posts. We also uh, added some type designation changes to, to keep that, to make that clear and separate it from, from previous year's versions for the fabricators. Uh, we've used dual dimensions on those drawings um, just to, to keep the number of sheets down. So I invite you to take a look at those two indexes. Then for the uh, traffic railings on bridges, we remove the delineator spacing table, which uh, will be, the spacings will be included in the specification. I have a question mark there next to section 705 because it's not in the, in the current spec, but I presume it will be in there in July when these become effective. So don't send me an email on that one. The height transition between roadway and bridge to accommodate the two inch fu uh, the future asphalt overlay um, results in, in some transition details from 36 to 38 inch height. And then we've also made some changes to accommodate three rows of conduit in the traffic railings. And as part of that, we modified the previous anchorage reinforcement that was issued for the single slope on bridges to, to open up the, the core of that traffic railing to, to better accommodate uh, the traffic railing, uh, the, the conduit. So, so those are 
actual changes to the to the single slope that had been previously issued under the developmental and under last year's design standards. The last one here was the 27 inch concrete parapet. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the name, the type of those posts supporting the bullet rails may have changed uh, depending on which index you're looking at. Moving on to noise walls, the, there were some minor changes to the spacing of the stirrups, the request of the contractor, uh, the precasters rather, and then we also clarified some acceptance criteria for those posts, for the, the basically the 22 foot high posts in the highest wind zone where the cover on the back side of the post was, was getting a little tight with the number 11 bars, so we relaxed some criteria there for acceptance in construction. For the perimeter walls, uh, similar change to the to the post. And then um, for the bridge fencing, we add some bracing details to, to one of the one of the types to support those those posts and expansion joint. There's also quite a few changes to those drawings because of the F shape to 36 inch single slope change. So, so take a look at those and be, be aware of those subtle changes. And then one new standard that we have is, is the bridge fencing over railroad, which is basically a curved top fence, similar to what used to be under index 811. Um, but instead of being on the back of the sidewalk, it is on um, the back of the traffic railing. It's um, slightly higher, and some of the horizontal, well, all of the horizontal rail members have been removed for crashworthiness. So that was issued as a developmental index on some projects on the 813 series. Um, so it, it comes in at 550-013. Um, this is only to be used when required by the railroad permitting authority and if, if there is no sidewalk such as a limited access facility then and this is probably going to be your only option to, to get that permit through. For the traffic railing noise wall, eight foot bridge mounted. And for the road side mounted, there has been modifications to the bottom portion of the of the structure to accommodate or match the shape of the approaching traffic railing. So that is now a single slope shape on the bottom. Uh, the reinforcing was tweaked a little bit to open up the core of the railing to accommodate conduit, which was a problem in the previous standard. And so once again, three conduits are allowed to be included in those in those elements. Similar changes to the to the shoulder-mounted, uh, footing-supported traffic railing noise walls. Uh, the difference <clears throat> here, well, the minor difference here is the name change. Uh, traffic railing got swapped out for concrete barrier because uh, it's not on bridge. So, but since these aren't on bridges, they don't, the PDFs don't need to be included in the structures component set of plans. Moving on to more traffic related changes. Uh, the transition to guardrail uh, has been Tweak slightly. Previously, we had about a four-inch um, cutback. It's now three inches to be consistent with the roadway traffic railing details. The transition to 38-inch height, which I mentioned previously, is shown, is detailed on on index 521-427 and 428. The single slopes. 
And then the embedded con well the conduits the there's a slight name change um, to the index and then detail changes related to the shape of the traffic railing and then accommodating the three conduits in those elements also. Uh, another change with that is now conduits are specifically paid for, they're not incidental to construction. So those have to be quantified and summarized in the in the quantities. Uh, in addition, the, the junction boxes are also required to be um, quantified and have a separate pay, payment item under the 635 series. Uh, details are included in the instructions on, on what is uh, required for those, so I encourage you to go and, and read up on the, on the SBI. Um, oh here, this is the slide talking about the new pay item number. There are also some other changes to to the instructions um, related to traffic railing shapes. The sink, you know, the, this is a little subtle, but some of the some of the box culverts, because they're not bridge structures. Um, they're not directly referred to the to the bridge standard plans, so details are being added into the box culvert index, and the data table for the box culverts has been updated to include a bar bending detail for the anchorage reinforcement. And because the the supporting uh, what do we call that parapet? is variable height depending on the amount of fill above the culvert to the railway surface. The designer is required to put a dimension in there so that the contractor has the, the correct dimensions for the bar bending. So you refer to the SPI for index 400-289. There are details provided in that. And then for the approach slabs, there were some minor clarifications to to the optional base um, and what to do with the quantities for, for that element. As far as the data tables, which are included in the structure cell library, the one major change, well, one significant change has been the addition of a new column to the build-up and deflection tables for, for the I-beams and the U-beams uh, to note the expected net beam camber, camber at release. Um, this gives the producer something to, a benchmark to monitor um, during the camber growth of the beams. So that was included at the request of our materials office and, and the producers. Uh, designers are required to include that information, which they they already have calculated during the design phase. Um, the the data tables have all been updated, obviously, to match the new naming and numbering conventions. So those are included in the in the latest CAD load. They can also be downloaded separately from our structures um, standard support page. And the highlighted file is, is identified there at the bottom of the screen for the latest um, catalog. There will be a hot fix coming out. There are some minor changes that need to be included. Escapes me exactly what those are right now, but so there'll be a hot fix coming out um, by the end of the year um, to include some of those those improvements that that didn't quite make it into the, the last CAD release, which came out in October, just, just before the, the standards in November. Looking ahead, in our crystal ball, we have <clears throat> one index that we've been working on for, for a while now, the precast intermediate bent, intermediate bent caps, part of our accelerated bridge construction initiative. Uh, that will will be released 
early next year. Um, if you have an interest in that, contact me and, and we can provide you some more details. The 300 series off system superstructure packages that were released, we, we still have the 600, 600, the 60 foot span length to to add, which which was in the original plans. So that hopefully will be out by mid, by mid year. And then uh, in June, there'll obviously be some some updated information at the Florida Innovative Transportation Symposium, which is the the new design expo. So look forward to seeing many of you there. And just a final message from our office and our group that we're always willing to consider your suggestions and and in, how all we do is that encourage you to fully read all the documentation provided before um, in the structures plans instructions. All right, that's all I have, so thank you very much. much.